personal perspective, Danny Siegel's poem speaks volumes about our imperfectly incomplete, inspiring world. Praise be the Lord of imperfection. Your flaws, O God, are everywhere. In the elms, unbalanced foliage, and the asymmetric faces of your creatures. You form the ripping floods that tear forests and bend tornadoes in a twisted dance. The lion is blotched with age and mud, and the Shabbos silverware lies stained as a reminder. Praised be your Torah of scratches and scars. Praised be your discolorations, for they are puzzles and poems of your sacred character. We begin our service on page 120 with the kindling of the Sabbath lights. Your books are under your seats, in case you're wondering. And I'm going to invite Ryan and Alexa with your moms to come on up to light candles. Turn to page 123 as we rise together for Kiddush. (laughs) 
Baruch Adonai, Eloheinu Melech HaOlam, Borei Peri HaGafen. Baruch Adonai, Eloheinu Melech HaOlam, Asher Kitshanu B'mitzvotav, Beratzavanu. Vishabat Kodesho, Be'ahava Uvratzon Himchilanu. Zikaro le maase vereshit, ki hu yom tehila le mikra e kodesh, zecher le tziyad mitzrayim. Ki vanyu acharta, v'yotanyu kitashta, mikol hanim, v'shabat. God's calling. Everyone, please take a seat. You guys can go sit down. Huh? Is that all right? Okay. We turn now to Psalms of Praise, Kabbalah Shabbat, beginning on page 130 with Psalm 95, Lechunaranana. Lechunaranana.
now to page 138, the pinnacle of Kabbalah Shabbat, L'chad Odi, tonight singing verses 1, 2, 5, and 9. And when we get to the last verse, we're going to stand together, turn and face those open doors as we welcome in the Sabbath bride. This is a time for schmoozing. If you want to say Shabbat Shalom to somebody you know or somebody you don't, it's a great time to do it. Shabbat 
All right, that's enough. That's enough. <laughs> so have a seat for a second so I can share with you the words of not a rabbi, but the great Presbyterian uh, preacher and teacher, Harry Emerson Fosdick, who really frames our prayer. What's the goal of our prayer? Is it to make life, as, as my grandmother would say, hunky-dory? Does anybody here know what hunky-dory means? I don't. But I think it means all just fine and easy-peasy. Here's what Fosdick writes in 1930. A heart of joy is never found in luxuriously coddled lives, but in men and women who aspire to dare, who have tried their powers against antagonism, who have even met sickness and bereavement and kept on going. If we were to pray for a happy world, we would not leave struggle out or make adversity impossible. The unhappiest world would be one with nothing hard to do, no conflict to wage for ends worthwhile, a world where courage was not needed and sacrifice was a superfluity. And so we understand we are called to join in this struggle for a more humane and holy world. We rise for the Baruch Hu. Fifty-four. 
Rabbi Nachman of Bratzlaff understands the road to redemption that we need to seek. He writes, spiritual awakening begins with inspiration coming from without. Then, once you are already on the road, the real work begins. Keep at it, and inspiration will come from within. The words of this setting of Micha Mocha can actually be found on the left side of the page, on the top of page 157. Standing on the parted shores of history, we still believe what we were taught. Before ever we stood at Sinai's foot, that wherever we go, it's eternally Egypt. That there's a better place, a promised land, and that winding way to the promise passes through the wilderness. That there's no way to get from here to there, except by joining hands and marching together, singing ya ya da da. about to join on 164 for what we usually call the silent filah, meaning silent prayer. But silent prayer is really a misnomer. It's not really silent. Here's what the Maharal of Prague teaches us. Prayer happens when we empty ourselves of all the words, for only then the silence speaks. So we're going to stand up and do just the first line, O oh God, Adonai, open my lips that my mouth may speak your glory or your praise, and then we're not going to say a word. It's the goal to listen to what's being said inside that just might be sparked by something far beyond you. 
You can sit down or you can stand up for that silent prayer as long as you hear a voice speaking. We rise. Peace in the 
A little Torah. Why not? We try to read Torah at least. Is this the second Friday, Cantor? Yeah, it is. This is the second Friday, and thus, a little Torah. We're going to take our Torah, and uh, anybody who is eligible for the Aliyah will be able to stand in their seats. I'll explain in a minute. We're on page 364. So we're going to talk about Torah after we read Torah, but this Aliyah, based on the Torah that I'll do line by line translation, could be for you, based on the Emor Torah tidbit that we'll share. So you can stand at your seat. You don't even have to come up here to share in the Aliyah. If you meet any of these criteria, you should stand. If you have any physical challenge or health malady, stand on your seat. Nobody here has a physical challenge. Stand at your seat. Just stand at your seat. You don't have to, you're not going to have to do anything. Remain calm. Okay. If you have ever had any hospitalization, surgery, or health issue with a doctor, stand in your seat. <laughs> if you've ever had a broken bone, stand at your seat. If you wear glasses or have contacts or your eyesight is not so great. If you've ever felt emotionally overwhelmed at any moment, stand at your seat. In other words, if you're human, this Aliyah is for you. Join me. Baruch Hu et Adonai. Baruch Adonai Hamvarach Le'olam Ba'ed. Baruch Adonai Hamvarach Le'olam Ba'ed. Baruch Ata Adonai Eloheinu Melech Ha'olam. Asher bachar banu mikol ha'min v'natan lanu etor. Amen. Vayedabia Adonai el Moshe lemor. And then Adonai spoke to Moses, saying, Daber el Aharon lemor. Speak to your brother Aaron, saying, Ish mizarach aladorotam. Any offspring for all generations. Asher yihyeh vomum who has any physical defect or otherwise uh, a flaw in them. Lo yakriv lahakriv lechem elohav. He may not offer the food of his God. Ki chol ish asher bomum. For anyone who in their, with whom, within whom there is a defect, lo yikrav, may not approach. Ish iver, o piseach, someone who is blind or lame. O cherem o sadua, or who has one limb too short or one limb too long. O ish ashir yehiev o shevet regel, who has a broken foot. 
O Shevir Yad, or a broken hand, and it just keeps going. Baruch Atah Adonai Eloheinu Melech HaOlam Asher Natan Lanu Torat Emet Bichaye Olam Nata Bitochenu Baruch Atah Adonai Noten HaTorah Ironically, we put this on so as not to offend the Torah by the words we speak. If you ever wanted Torah not to live by, it is in this week's portion, in the prohibition of who can offer Lechem Elohav, the food of his God, in serving at the holy altar in the ranks of the Kohanim. No one who's blind or lame, limb too short, I just read it. It goes on, and I can't even say it all. Growth in his eye a scar on the skin, any physical defect will bring, can, may not bring the sacred sacrifice to Adonai. Never mind the American Disabilities Act. This is discrimination based on the slightest visible imperfection. Sounds like you need to be a perfect physical specimen to serve as a sacred officiant in the ancient holy temple. And though the Rambam, super rationalist neo Aristotelian philosopher, tries to redeem the repulsiveness, saying, it was necessary that the Kohanim be unblemished physically in order for the temple service to be honored, since all judged by outer appearance. What about the large majority of Kohanim, the priests, and us, who are highly imperfect? Are we barred from coming close to God's presence? Don't look the part? Don't fit the bill for Kohanim casting? Forget about it. A week or so ago, Ty and Soph, my daughter and her wonderful boyfriend of eight plus years, turned me on to The Offer. Anybody here, The Offer? Anybody? Nobody's watching The Offer on TV? Oh my God. A dramatic 10 episode miniseries that tells the backstory behind the making of The Godfather. It more than caught my attention. Not alone is it a time capsule, musical especially, of my young teen years, but the battle to make Francis Ford Coppola's movie fought largely by Al Ruddy, the Jewish executive producer, is as epic as the film itself. One big fight was getting Michael Corleone cast. What was the problem? In a word, Al Pacino. Bob Evans, head of Paramount, was vehemently opposed. And his reasoning? Because Pacino was a nobody. He talks funny. And he is way too short. Of course, we all know the end of the story. Pacino's iconic role not only paved his career path, but made the movie as well. Living in the Instagram age that we do, we're putting out the perfect picture or editing that 10 second video to perfection conveys the image we aspire to be, we are answering the casting call with a filtered image, some altered ideal to, that's fit for public consumption. But what about us, our all too real, flawed, highly imperfect selves? I was barely five feet, Alexa and Ryan, at my bar mitzvah. Just want you to know, the girls are always taller. It's an unfair truth. <laughs> By the time I was a freshman in high school, I had grown eight inches to 5'8". Cirque family lore, according to my mother, may her memory be a blessing, tells the tale of me as a first grader coming home one day in tears I explained that in picking teams for kickball, I was chosen last for what I understood as the rightful reason, as I said to my mother, because I'm a shrimp. I knowing, knowing I was the shortest kid in my class, my mother's response was classic, if not rabbinic. Jeffrey, honey, being tall is about how big you feel inside, so that means you are a giant. 2,000 years ago, 
Rabbi Gamliel was the head of the academy at Yavne, preserving Jewish life after the destruction of the Temple of Jerusalem by studying at this new academy in Yavne. Rabbi Gamliel was a bit aristocratic in his origins and temperament. Seeing himself as a cut above, he was almost royal in his rabbinic approach, not all that loved by his colleagues, though brilliant in his mind. Another of the greats of those days was Shmuel HaKatan, Samuel the Small. Not at all a description of his height. Rather, as the Talmudic tale goes, Rabban Gamliel once invited the sages of his day to a feast, setting just the right number of places at the table. Yet when everyone went to sit down, they were one place short. Who has come uninvited? Gamliel bellows. Shmuel quickly arose. Must be me. And he left. As the Talmud explains, it was not him at all. But Shmuel HaKatan was so called because he was willing to diminish his own status rather than bring embarrassment to any other person. Height, it seems, is a matter of humility of heart. A perfectly imperfect people, this Israel. Jacob limped. Moses was a stutterer. Isaac was blind. If the foreman of our leader, of leaders of our people, were physically flawed, what model does that suggest for us today? As disturbing as the idea that a physically defective priest will profane the sacred places of God is the notion that spiritual leadership depends on wholeness. In these postmodern times, we see a world that has been shattered, and we seek leaders who have learned to find meaning in broken people and places. Rabbi Rachel Cowan's words show us the truth of being human. We are all a little bit broken. On the outside, for sure, and more significantly, on the inside. No one's perfect. But here is the great revelation beyond the limited scope of the Torah's priestly prohibition. That brokenness is where holiness is found. Wednesday night, right here, we were blessed to have Rabbi Ariel Berger return to us to teach about the work of the Witness Institute, nurturing a new generation of leaders through the vision of Elie Wiesel. After he finished his talk, I approached to thank him, along with the founding president of the Witness Institute, Alicia Wiesel, Elie's son. But Rabbi Berger immediately interrupted my praise ever humble. We should end with the word of Torah. And so he said, two sets of tablets are placed in the Holy Ark. The ones we read, written by Moses' own hand, and the ones that are shattered, written by God. Isn't it amazing, truly something, that the broken pieces can be just as holy, maybe even more? It is the vulnerability we share, the flaws which are everywhere, that help us connect as a community of care. For from our brokenness comes not only humility that can open our hearts, but the blessing of our imperfection that may well make us giants inside.
Amen. It is the right time to be able to stand as a congregation and pray for those who are broken in body and spirit. So join me. Stand together. If you want to connect, if you feel safe doing that, go right ahead. As we pray for those broken souls, many among us who face the future not fully whole. May the one who blessed our mothers and fathers before us bring strength to those who struggle against sickness, those who so long to be whole. We especially call to mind at this moment of prayer for healing, Jody Ritter, Barry Fenner, Julian Edmond, Paul Millman, Elliot Pulwich, Jeannie Gramey, Rhea and Marvin Weiss, Rabbi Fred Green, Nancy Hanley, Neil Borden, Esther Schraga, Marlo Wiggins, Carol Sladkiss, Dick Stone, Harriet Lipton, Hannah Stampleman, Enid Elton, Bonnie Davis, Lori Weinberg, Stanley Tereski, Bob Glassman, Marty Feldner, Andy Rosenthal, Sandy Warshaw, Avram Yochanan, Dov Lesser, Louis Siegel, Nate Moskowitz, Ari Fox, Keith Schoen, June Foreman, Paul Wiggins, Jody Kahn, Joseph Spinelli, Susie Wolfson, Harriet Katz, Antonia Nolita Chipola, Pat Ryan, Sam Phillip, Jerry Gallner, Ian Spear, Norton Blumberg. Terry Rossman, Julie Ross, Greg Kellner, Scott Siegel, Daniel Foley, George Simonoff, Megan Kearney Bailey, Jerry Rubin, Tevia Ben Fremahinka, Miriam Siegel, Dan Zimmerman, Tyler Grad, Karen Levine, Joanne Tobin, Barbara Schiff, Elizabeth Sanger, and my son Aaron. Would anyone here add a name in hopes of healing?
When somebody leaves this world, it's a dark place. Those of us who've lost loved ones in recent days and weeks, those who remember at your side time, could be years and years. Those people's love and light doesn't go out. It remains. So Rabbi Chaim Stern's words just speak. The light of life is a finite flame. Like the Shabbat candles, life is kindled, it burns, it glows. It is radiant with warmth and, warmth and beauty, but soon it fades. Its substance is consumed and it is no more. In light we see, in light we are seen. The flames dance and our life burns and our life is glowing, yet there is an end to the flames. We see no more and are no more seen. Yet we cannot despair, for we are more than a memory slowly fading into the darkness. With our lives we give life. Something of us can never die. We move in the eternal cycle of darkness and death, of light and life. We remember the lights that still shine within us and between us, especially those who died recently in our congregational family of Michele Mancino, father of Maria Drittel, Alon Reamer, friend of Gary Rod Bell, Robert Levine, friend of Michael Nathan, Martin Rosenblatt, husband of Joan, father of Stephen, father-in-law of Lori, Justin Greenberg, nephew of Jane Sable Friedman, Eric Volper, son of Hillary, brother of Mandy, brother-in-law of Sandy, uncle of Ryan and Juliet, Suzanne Biederman, mother of Lori, Allison and Ian, and just yesterday, Phyllis Haas, son of Peter. To those names, we link the many yurt sites observed the anniversaries of death in our congregational community of Geraldine Lewis, Eleanor R. King, Lillian Iglitz, Benjamin Kaplan, Lisa Hirschman, 
Hilda Sperman, past chair of the Union for Reform Judaism, Mel Merians, Jesse Hirsch, Barbara Levine, Julian Turk, Saul Mintz, Bert Israel, Saul Wasung, Louis Easton, Dora Shapiro, Natalie Hamburg, Jack Browse, Esther Bernstein, Bunny Michnik, Julian Kahn, Bertha Gordon, Erwin Ryder, Tzvi Martin Lefkovich, Manuel Lashinsky, Larry Buchan, Alan Shapiro, Max Brooks, Shirley Har, Gussie Kaplan, Peter Scott Haig, Zila Mankin, Samuel Goldman, John Kaufman, Claire Diamond Kaplan, Franklin Marks, Maurice Ace Bernstein, Harry Adams, Louise Jean Gardner, Pearl Lichter, Erna Bing, Francis Gordon, Corrine Schub, Ron Schleifer, Ralph Becker, Ethel Rich, Rosalind Mann, and my dear friend, Mickey Severin. Will anyone here add a name in hopes? Yeah. The memories of all of them are with us. Their light still burns in our lives, very bright, whenever we remember. Join me in words of Kaddish. Yit gadal v'yit kadash sheme raba be'alma divrach yerute v'yam lich malchute v'chayechon v'yomei chon v'chaye d'chol be' Yisrael ba'agala u'vizman kari v'yimru amen yehe shme raba mevorach le'olam u'olmei almaya yit barach v'yit tabach v'yit pa'ar v'yit romam v'yit naseh Viet Hadar, Viet Alev, Viet Alal, Shme de Kudsha, Barichu, Le Ela, Min Kol, Berchata, Vishirata, Tush Berchata, Venechamata, Dami Ran Baalma, Vimru, Amen, Yehe Shlama Rabba, Min Shemaya, Vichayim Alenu, Val Kol Yisrael, Vimru, Amen, Ose Shalom, Vimromav, Huya Se Shalom, Alenu, Val Kol Yisrael, Amen. Zichronam Livracha, may their memories be our blessing. Amen. Is there nobody doing announcements? I was, I was, no? Do you, do you have any announcements? I always have an announcement or two. You, you so, um, so uh, first of all, if you if you have if tomorrow at Chaver Torah, we're going to study an even more disturbing moment in this week's Torah portion at Shabbat morning, uh, online on Zoom or in the garden room. So feel free. We have a couple of B'nai Mitzvah, which is awesome, right? Alexa, Ryan, it's going to be amazing. Um, and here's the question: When do you actually become a Bat or Bar Mitzvah? Like, what would you say? Like, what at what moment? After you, after you do your your Torah stuff, which is what tradition would say, right? You read from Torah, poof. What do you think? Third Aliyah, right? Here's the secret. You're already B'nai Mitzvah because you're doing it. Because you're doing mitzvahs, because you're making the world better, because you're taking it seriously, and because you know this is just the beginning of the really good stuff for Jewish learning. So plan on being in my 10th grade confirmation class where we spend the entire year searching out God. Abigail Greenblatt, how is it? Bingo, right? We did not plan this, but I will pay you after Shabbat. We are thrilled for your families, so excited for you. It's going to be great. We have a whole bunch of stuff going on Shabbat. We have a whole bunch of stuff going on at the temple. One of the great highlights is that we get to honor Carol Scharf next Wednesday. Um, next Thursday? I know what day it is. Next Thursday and, um, at, at Bonnie Briar Country Club. And uh, we are honoring Carol Scharf because, and you'll find out why, she is probably the single leader of Larchmont Temple who saved Larchmont Temple. I will tell the story Thursday night. Um, I'd love to invite you all. You can't come. We have a waiting list. Carol. Only Carol. Only Carol. Only Carol. 
and before we do our closing song, I'll be, stand because we're going to sing together but i want to just say thank you to our wonderful musicians who bring such ruach such spirit to our services with that we end with on a high note with a great spirited song <laughs> Shabbat Shalom.